Good evening. I'll call the meeting to order at this time. Oh, no, if you no, will no, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. This time I'll call on uh, Dr. Barber if he will lead us in the invocation. Dear Lord, so thank you. We have this opportunity. We can come. We can uh, do your business for the town of Smithville. <clears throat> we pray, Lord, that the decisions we make are the right decisions. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, help us to be representative of those who have voted for us and put us in these positions, that we would do the things that would be uh, uh, something that they would be proud to be part of our town for us doing those type of decisions. Again, we thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. We pray right now that you would uh, uh, stay with us, protect us, and make us do the right things in your name. For us in your name we pray it. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, the liberty of justice for all. All right, gentlemen, um, we have the agenda in front of you. There are a couple of known changes. Uh, we need to remove public hearing number two. Um, that is at the request of the applicant. And we do need to add a close uh, session to the end of the meeting pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11, Section A-5. Are there... Um, or did we have the... Oh, uh, public hearing. Did I say business mm -hmm. on we know, no doubt. The annexation, annexation yeah. is going to remain. That that's going to remain. Yeah. yeah. I think because that's just the kind of start of the ask the clerk if the sufficiency of it correct. So I think that could stay. Okay. Not a big valid point. Any other changes? Uh, yes. If it suits the council, I'd like to move. Business item three and four to consent agenda item 10 and 11. Any issues with that? From no, did that include contact? five as well? I thought that was. Uh, no, there was one issue on that. Okay. Just for clarification. Gotcha. All right. All right, so, so that's, yeah, I went through, all right. Um, all right, so that's uh, <clears throat> business items three and four to consent agenda, correct? Yes. All right, and then uh, just one clarification. Um, do, I mean, Bob, you, you, you had mentioned uh, the, the first item, <clears throat> excuse me, I think you had just, you had mentioned the first public hearing, continue that to, October meeting? Well, the second one, we're going to continue the October meeting in Florida Landing, I think. Stephen, what are you going to do with it? Blue line till the October meeting. Okay. All right. So you're not going to do the annexation certification tonight? We are. We are. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. But, but, but what you're saying, though, is that the Substance. public hearing two for Blue Line be postponed until the October meeting. Just okay. The other day. So, so that, that's part of, right, is moving that to October. I don't know if I said okay. that originally because I didn't know that. So, <clears throat> all right. Any other changes? Mayor, right. I'll make a motion. We approve the agenda as amended. Second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Okay, we will move on then uh, to our first public hearing. <clears throat> All right, this is a uh, ANX-22-01 contiguous annexation petition for Floyd Landing Holden LLC. All right. Did you open the public open hearing? The public hearing on that. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? I make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? 
Motion carries. All right, thank Same you. I'll turn it over to you, sir. Floyd Landings LLC has submitted a petition for a voluntary annexation of 96.82 acres to the town of Smithfield. And the town council is asked to hold the public hearing tonight, which we've just opened, and adopt an ordinance number 508, extending the corporate limits of the town of Smithfield. This can be done immediately tonight or within six months from now. This is the location in the hashed red. Um, that is across the street from the new Amazon facility being constructed, and it's adjacent to the current town limits. This is the annexation survey, which will be recorded upon uh, approval. This is a reference on June 7th, the council adopted a resolution to have the clerk investigate the sufficiency of the petition, and then the last meeting, um, the council adopted a resolution setting the public hearing for tonight's meeting. Um, Floyd's Landing will utilize uh, the town's water and sewer and Duke's electrical grid. Um, this will be um, within the jurisdiction of the town's police, um, police patrol. Fire protection, it is within our, our fire district. Public Works will be providing trash, yard, and waste pickup, and for code enforcement, um, that is within our, our code enforcement jur jurisdiction. However, with HOAs, typically they do a pretty good job of policing themselves with their HOA. We rarely have um, complaints within an HOA, so it's not a lot of work for us. So staff is recommending the council adopt ordinance 508, extending the corporate limits of the town of Smithfield. Any questions? Any pursuing at this time? Anyone in the audience wishing to speak on this matter? Okay. Not seeing anyone. All right. Um, I'll entertain the motion at this time to, to close the public hearing. I move to close the public hearing. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion carries. All right. What's the <clears throat> pleasure of the board? Motion. We move to adopt ordinance number 508, extending the corporate limits of the town of Smithfield. Second. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate it. Now we will move on to um, citizens' comments. If there's anyone wishing to speak during citizens' comments, you will please come forward at this time. I will ask you to hold your comments to, to three minutes, um, if you don't mind. Ann, if you will please state your name and address for the record. Elizabeth Ann Temple. Um, I'm at 904 Chestnut Drive, Smithville, North Carolina. And it's a pleasure to be here tonight with all of you. I'm Elizabeth Temple. I was a candidate for Smithfield Town Council District 2. <clears throat> I was a babysitter for Sloan and his sister when they were very young. My brother is lifelong friends with Marlon Lee, and I'm dear friends with Doris Wallace, who ran for Town Council District 4. Doris and I sing in our church choir together. I applied for approval to volunteer for the Historic Properties Town Advisory Board. I wish to protect Smithfield's generational homes and trace ancestry of those who wish to know their ancestry, including once enslaved people's history at the Heritage Center. I have experience in doing genealogy. I am in support of providing local funding to do upgrades as needed only if requested by the owners of generational homes. I do not support hiring a part-time code enforcement officer. I will work to designate more homes as historical in the area. In 2018, I spoke at the NC Legislature Building in Raleigh to the legislators in support of the Voter ID Act and the Born Alive Act. I will be a candidate for NC House of Representatives District 28 in two years. As a member of NAACP and having assisted Reverend Dr. William Barber at a protest, I understand the desire of all people to achieve justice and equality. I am a recently renewed licensed public school teacher in North Carolina 
with a master's degree. After working during college at a daycare center for children, I taught all ages of students in music. I'm listed in Marquis Who's Who in America, top educators for 2021-2022. My family includes many military veterans. My great uncle from Selma served in World War II. My life experiences, values, and education will be an asset to the town as a whole. In addition, I know of Mary Nell Ferguson, who is on the Historic Properties Board from our longtime membership in the local chapter of National Society Daughters of the American Revolution. Finally, there are African Americans whose ancestors fought and served in the Revolutionary War who are members of the National Organization of NSDAR. This is of interest as our town was established a year after the Declaration of Independence, and there could be more to gain membership. Thank you for your time, and sincerely, with regard, Elizabeth Ann Temple. I'd like to submit my letter to the record, and also my green flyer for um, running for town council district two in May. Thank you for your time. Is, is it all right if I give you this, or sure, should I absolutely. leave it here? Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Temple. Anyone else wishing to speak? Please come forward at this time. Okay, not seeing anyone. We will move on to the consent agenda. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. Motion we approve the, the we uh, accept the consent agenda as uh, as uh, modified. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, now we'll move on to business item number one, <clears throat> which is um, Annex 22 02. Uh, Blue Line Aviation has submitted a petition for voluntary non contiguous annexation of 14.43 acres into the town of Smithfield and adoption of resolution number 704 directing the clerk to investigate the sufficiency of the petition. Stephen? Sure. Um, thank you, Mayor. So, this is a first step in a three part, a three, three step process. First step is the, the council to ask the clerk to investigate the sufficiency. The second step will be for, her, for the council to set the date for the public hearing, and then the third step is the public hearing. Um, the intent is have the clerk investigate the sufficiency and then have the public hearing following the, uh, the rezoning meeting that's likely to be held in October. So that'll be the, the next two steps to get us there. So this is just the first step to ask, ask the clerk to investigate the sufficiency of the petition. Any questions or anything for Stephen at this time? If not, uh, it's the pleasure of the council. I move we adopt the resolution number 703. Uh, is, it, is it 703 it or 704? Right which one? You got 703 or 704, which is it? It says 703 on this piece of paper. Yep. It says 704. Right there it says 704. Oh, it does. 704. 704. 704. 704. 704. 704. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. So I have a motion uh, to, to adopt uh, resolution number 704. Do I have a second? Right. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, and we'll move on to the um, next business item. It's consideration and request for approval to adopt resolution number 705 to begin the procedure for closing of Circle Drive. Stephen? Mm -hmm. Got to look at the agenda. <laughs> I was like, where do you go? <laughs> <laughs> this petition is being brought to you by um, Walter Sanders Funeral Home. Um, you can see on this map, this is the uh, survey that identifies the street that would be closed. Um, that street runs right through the middle of what is now 
mostly their land. I mean, they own all the land on either side of that street, and essentially it's, it's dividing their campus and creating unnecessary setbacks and other issues at this point. Um, there is a single family home that is owned by them, which through a lot, a lot recombination will have to still have street frontage. And there is a power, e uh, sorry, a uh, utility line running down that street, which an easement will have to be uh, granted for that to maintain that, that utility line. Other than that, uh, staff is uh, in favor of the closure. It's a, it's a um, street that is 20 feet wide in a 20 foot wide right of way, which is very unusual and very, um, um, it's, it's not within our standards anyway. It's really more or less an alley and it's not serving the town purpose anymore. So staff is recommending um, approval of, of this process. Okay. Any questions from Stephen at this time? Just so I can see it, because I think the page here was a little off. Can you mm -hmm. zoom in on that road closure? Okay, so it runs all the way through. That's right. From okay. Yeah. The one block street. Okay. What in our packet? It was it, it was, was only the top. It, it was corner. cut off. Oh, so I see. So we can't we can't see that entire yeah, thing in our packet. So this, <laughs> yeah, this okay. is what we got. You got close. Yeah, yeah, close. Okay. Just not the entire street. Yeah. So, all right. Any other questions? All right. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board? For resolution number seven zero five. I make a motion we accept resolution 705. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 705. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Thank you very much. All right. Moving right along. <coughs> Let's see. So business item three and business item four were moved to consent agenda. So then we will... Move to item number five, consideration and request for approval to amend the fiscal year 22-23 fee schedule. Um, is that the two chiefs, or Mike, are you handling that one, or I um, guess? We could have fire chief come up, police chief as well. Fire chief and the police chief. Somebody's <laughs> really working. in trouble now. Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow. Do it one time. Hey, we can do it. Yeah. Um, so the fee schedule uh, from the fire department, we've uh, increased a few things on that uh, just to uh, help us out with our um, collections uh, and to enforce our uh, fire alarms, things of that nature. Uh, that is pretty much consistent of what uh, other towns do. Uh, it's basically to help us uh, kind of help other get their alarm systems fixed. If we continue charging $25 for a fire alarm and it costs them $700 to repair it, then they would probably pay some five dollars, and this is kind of encouraging people to fix their alarm systems. It also, uh, we do give them three fire alarms for free that are uh, not valid alarms. Valid alarms we do not charge for. We mm -hmm. we validate them. But if it's a nuisance alarm, give them three, and after three we start charging. Uh, there was some questions on the parking, uh, the fire lanes. Uh, that's one of the things we talked about together, mm -hmm. uh, make, making that fifty dollars uh, from twenty-five. That will uh, just start with uh, some education, going out and letting the public know that hey, you uh, you are in the fire lane. Uh, it does hamper our, you know, in case we have a call. So uh, we will start out with education first, educating the public, letting them know that we will be enforcing it, and that fee would go to fifty dollars. Okay. And it's it, as far as the false alarms, fire alarms, it's three in a year three period. In a year fiscal year, yes, sir. So it starts over annually. It starts over annually, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It resets. Gotcha. Not, so it's, it's okay. My it's th every January first. Every okay, ja thank any you, January thank first, you. not every fiscal. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's to, that's to be fair. You know, yep. you know we'll give you three, um, and after that, you know, we, we encourage the, the fire marshal will go out and encourage them to get their alarm fixed or whatever it is, and we work with them, so we you know help them out whatever we can do. So, chief, is that is, is three? Is are we being? I'm just I don't know what other towns do, but are we being a little too generous with the no, three? So three, okay, three Three is uh, pretty standard across okay. the board. Um, kind of like the uh, term ball game. You know, we give you three strikes. And yeah. say, look, you know, we're letting you know that this is it. Yeah. Now, if it becomes a nuisance alarm, then 
in our fee schedule, we increase it. So if you notice the increase, the fines go up more. Okay. And more. All right. And it's continuing until it's. And the only thing I would say that we need to look at down the road is how we're going to collect those fees. Um, you know, we can ask them to pay for them, but if they don't pay, then we may look at uh, some type of collection agency, or we may look at uh, through the utilities. Mm -hmm. We may need to look at that if they don't pay. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Any questions for him? Any questions for him? Any? Would this be effective tonight? So if once we vote on it? Just curiosity. We, all it, we, can, we can start we can it. Start. Okay. All right. Any any other questions for the chiefs at this time or the manager? If not, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the the fee schedule. I, well, well, so, so, so I, I have a question though related to the okay. to the parking, not the fees, but I know we're going up on some fees. My question is, when are we going to start enforcing those things? I know we've been lenient on people parking on the curbs and on the side of the roads, and so my question is, when are we going to start? Because you know, we can raise the fee to $1,000 if we don't charge anybody with it. It don't mean anything. We're, we're, working, <laughs> with, we're working with Sarah and uh, the downtown development on the parking to get all the business owners made aware of it. Um, some miscommunication between us, but we've got it straightened out. So we'll, it's pretty, coming pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, my, my, my emphasis was that we need to, if we, if the point is if we have something in place, then we need to try to implement. There's nothing wrong. I, I agree with the, the idea of you give us some warnings for people, perhaps, you know, whatever. They were done it, but we have habitual stuff, and it's getting worse and worse. I see little cars parked on the side of the road. I mean, you know, uh, you understand a big truck, you see little teeny cars halfway on the side of the walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just saying, so it's, it's become where everybody knows that nobody's going to say anything, so everybody's doing it. So, you know. <coughs> yes, sir. In the fire code, just so you'll know, in the ordinances, uh, we had to, uh, because it is a state ordinance, three foot of parking around hydrants. So we have to enforce that. And are you marking those? Are those marked off clearly? Because sometimes sure. things fade, you know, and then people don't know that they're there, and that's not. Right. And I'll give it to Lawrence, mm -hmm. and the manager will talk about how we need to sure. do that. Because that's that going is, on uh, 25. That's all. Yeah. So so that's everybody should know that part of the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we will take care. We'll address mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Yep. So actually, and, and just, for, just for clarification, right, so the citations for the fire lane is going from 25 to 50, correct? And then uh, parking, let's see, parking on the wrong, well, all these increased, right? Is yep. this the only one we, we yeah, just needed to, one yeah, the fire lane one, yeah, is, is being increased to, to 50 just for clarification purposes. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. We approve the request, but I also have a comment. Um, there's two different subjects, parking on the curb on Market Street versus fire lane parking. It's two different things. Yep. Correct. And it's understood that the reason people do that is to avoid collision. And there is a lot of collisions there with mirrors. So um, I just want to make sure I made that clear. We've got to look at that. And we've discussed that utility easement that lies there, that we possibly could make those a little bit wider. But I just wanted to make sure that that's how I personally feel about that. Yep. I do make a motion to approve the uh, fee schedule as amended with the $50 fire alarm change, fire lane change. Mm -hmm. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right, any further discussion? Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Some carries. All right. And we'll move on to um, council members' comments. Comments from the council? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. I have a few uh, myself. Um, actually, I got a call over the weekend. Actually, I just got back in from a conference, but I did get a call. Um, this is still concerning um, one of the houses that was under the CBD um, grant. And um, actually, this house ended up burning up. Um, so now um, I, I did get a message. I got a call and just trying to find out. I mean, I don't even know what all the details were, but um, but I guess this family was um, almost thinking um, since the house did burn up, um, 
even though the house hasn't been fixed, that they were and still entitled to have to pay $25,000 or whatever much it was. And so um, I know I have talked to Miss Maxine Hunter down on East Street a little bit. And uh, at just some point, um, I mean, just need some communication on what's going on because, I mean, what we thought was a good thing when we even got this grant is now it's just one house is messed up, one burn up, and, um, you know, it probably would have been best if we didn't get the grant if these are the outcomes that we're getting. So just hopefully um, get some communication and, and feedback on what's going on with some of these houses. Um, also, it is a national night out. Um, I got back in town about 4.30 today, and at least I was able to stop over to JCC and um, kind of greet uh, the police department and fire department and all the emergency services. And, you know, um, I almost think it's a, a travesty that it is national night out, and we're sitting here having a meeting, and we got our chiefs in here. I know Chief Powell was over there. I saw him, but, I mean, I just think it's, I think it's just big that, you know, um, I did want to have the meeting changed, but I mean, that, that we are supporting them. So, but at least I did get a chance to stop over there before I came out here. So just to say, you know, you know, support what they do. The last time I was in here, um, I missed the July meeting, but um, I did um, raise a concern at the last budget meeting on um, uh, Sarah Yard Community Center. Um, you know, there was some money that was sent in to the center um, back in December after she passed away. There was some money sent in uh, back during COVID. Um, the center was shut down, but it was a food, um, it was a food donation place. Actually, we was giving away food through the school system. Uh, back in about February or March, I came in here and I talked to our finance director just to find out, you know, how much money was in the account. And he said he couldn't find out. Um, I did send an email and um, I did get a response that it was $150. Um, that was the last check that was sent um, by one of my friends, Alan Anderson, he's in Virginia. But um, I just wanna ask, And has the rest of the money been accounted for? We've gone through everything that we can go through to try to identify any other checks that came in. We had that $150 check that came in. We had another one, I believe, for $20 that we identified, but that's all that's been identified at this point is coming into the town for that. If, if you have or we, we – I guess we've crossed every bridge that we can to try to find out any other people who may have donated, but we haven't been able to identify anyone. So as far as we know, that's all there is. No, if you have it, some others, we are glad to talk to them. It's not all it is. That's, that's not right. Well, That's definitely not all it is. So, okay. But I'll leave it alone. That's, it's not all it is. Well, I'm going to leave it alone. Um, this summer, I have gotten the most complaints about parks and red baseball. Um, I know we got a new Parks and Rec guy, I guess, in or whatever. Um, I went over doing um, the all-star tournaments and whatever. Uh, one of the biggest things that was striking to me is one night I went over there doing a the thunderstorm. It was lightning. And then we told the kids to go in the dugouts instead of going to their cars. And, you know, people I mean, asking me about that. I mean, it's dead lightning. And, you know, I just... I mean, it's lightning. Those dugouts are metal and, you know, got to be more, you know, safety or whatever and sending the kids, you know, pretty much back to their cars and being safe. I mean, that was just a concern right there. Then I got another concern. I don't know who it is. When I find out, I make it public. But I don't feel like our underserved kids are getting a chance at Parks and Rec. And there was a statement made by somebody from Parks and Rec that said they don't care how many programs they run because they are a salary and pro, uh, they are a salary person. And so if they run one program or 15 programs, they still going to get paid. I got a problem with that. When I find out who did said, I'm gonna make it public, and I hope they're dealt with. Um, it was told. Um, 
that we sent some of our kids because we didn't have enough kids for a program here to go to another town and play. And that was basically when the statement was made, you know, go play in another town because we don't have enough kids signing up here. Um, got a call last week that there was, wasn't going to be no football for the little kids to play football. But I heard they extended the deadline. I tell everybody, I don't care who it is, what color, it don't matter. If a kid wants to play parts and rec, they don't have the money, I'll pay for it. We, we got to do by our kids. You know, some of these kids, you know, it's not even really the, the, the athletic part of playing. It's the discipline they're getting. Miss Ann Temple that came out here and spoke tonight, her brother and I, Will Temple, we grew up, and through sports and being classmates, we, we've been tight. So it's not just through sports, the athletic tennis point, but it is, it's the discipline. It's the camaraderie we get. But um, I feel like some of my kids are not getting a chance. Today, 535, I was out there nice in the night out, and I got another text from a young lady. And I know a few years ago in the council, we wanted to eliminate the cost for kids playing parks and rec. Parks and rec. I mean, yeah, why, why should they have to pay to play? And a lot of these underserved kids, they don't know when the sign-ups are. You know, their parents probably can't go on the internet. And I just think we got to do more for our kids, especially in this area here. And that's why, you know, Triple S programs, that's why they're not good. You got to have parts and rec football. So then they can be ready to play middle school football. But we got to do more. And when I find out who made that statement, I hope it, the person is dealt with, because I'm, I'm going to call them out. That's all I have to say. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak? I got a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to the animal control people. I had a, uh, um, we have a person that works for the town who was, who's not, who was, uh, somebody had given her some kittens to take into the animal shelter. And uh, she, um, has got she got, got in a she has a, a physical thing occurred and she wasn't able to do it and uh, so they she I was talking to her and she said yeah I was hoping to get them there because you know one if you're going to take a kitten to the you need to take a kitten not a cat so that somebody will pick them up and um, my schedule was pretty hectic so I asked if the animal control person could come and they did they picked them up they were very friendly they took them it was great so I do appreciate their effort to be there and to do what needs to be done. And that's one thing. Second thing is, I don't know where we are on the pedestrian plan. Uh, is it, it's not been approved yet, has not been, I mean, I don't know where we are on that. That's important though, because we need, and I've got my last little harp that I wanna harp about. Well, you wanna tell me pedestrian plan? All right, that'd be great. Then I'll, I'll finish my harp, go ahead. Thank you. Um, we have a draft, which staff is reviewing. We're gonna assemble all the comments, send it back to the um, consultant, and at that point, they will send a final draft for the council to approve. Oh, time frame? Um, I don't know how busy they are. We should have all the comments back to them probably next week. I would guess it would probably take them a month or so to sift through the comments. I can ask for an update. Okay. Quick, Steve, while you're there, I'm talking about a pedestrian plan. <clears throat> Um, is there anything along 301, kind of south of south of uh, the food line? There's a lot of foot traffic along that way. Is there anything along uh, that where we could south 301? Yeah, well, I'd say put it on the north side. Seems to be more room over there. Is there for a sidewalk along 301? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what about? Is there anything on the plan from on Brogdon Road, pretty much from the bridge into town? Three hundred plan. I believe for that? so. Okay, that's it. And so, on that note, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up. So, my concern is that we still need to find a method to connect West Smithfield to the rest of the town. Uh, we don't have a way to get here without a car. You can't drive your bike. You can't ride your bicycle without putting your life in your hands. You sure can't walk. Uh, it's just, I mean, the, it's, it's it's dangerous. And uh, we have a large population that lives in West Smithfield. We continue to grow. Uh, and we need to have some way for pedestrians to get down into town. I mean, there's a lot of amenities that our town has that we pay as taxpayers pay for that we can't get to participate on. We have issues related to uh, 
um, you know, because we have a library down there. And we, we as a town, special effort have to pay extra money for that I'd love to see my kids in that neighborhood and our adults walk down there and be able to do that. We also have the Heritage Center that we were talking about a little bit. I've seen some stuff come up about them. And the Heritage Center is a great place, but our kids can't get there unless an adult brings them, unless they want to put their lives in the hand. we got to do something. We keep talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. I've harped on this for four years now. And I'm on year number five. And I guess I'm, I, hope I'm not, I hope not to hit year number six before we make a plan to do something about it. Uh, we've got to connect West Smithfield to the rest of the town. I know we're hoping developers come and build sidewalks. The Lord knows we don't want to do it. But um, I'm being facetious because I do want to do it. But, uh, you know, we need to connect West Smithfield to the rest of town. And that's my statement. Mary, I have a couple mm -hmm. comments. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. Um, the first thing I want to say is... Um, I did see the communication about the Heritage Center. I didn't, it wasn't, um, just wanted to say that I, I personally visited the Heritage Center this past weekend, and um, it is a remarkable resource for the community. There's a lot of res a lot of data there. Um, it's a phenomenal thing. If you haven't been, you should certainly go, but I think that it is important for us to support that whatever way that we can. I just want to go on the record and say that. The other thing I had, I had uh, w wanted to speak about, uh, I know Councilman Lee has, um, has some very passionate topics that he's brought up, but this uh, just week he wasn't here. But uh, July we had he had a, an event hosted fun in the park, and it was quite remarkable turnout. And um, one thing that stood out to me in conversation is uh, this man took money out of his own pocket to provide those children. I think he should be recognized for that because that is uh, like he's mentioned, it's unfortunate. Um, we understand. Uh, I understand his passion for wanting things to be right, and I just hope that we can continue to support um, those programs. And uh, I just want to tell him personally, thank you publicly for uh, his efforts and the fun in the park. It was a great event, it was well, well attended, um, and they had a lot of activities, and I know he put a lot of sweat equity in that program. So thank you, Councilman Lee. That's all I have. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Mr. Manager, turn it over to you. Your report, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Only a couple quick things. Um, I remind the council that we're going to have a special session on August 30th at 6.30 p.m. here in the council chambers, be a workshop, talk about some of our uh, possible administrative code changes to dilapidated buildings, as well as some other issues such as stormwater that need to be discussed with the council. Um, we'll make formal notice of that uh, at a later time, but please make sure that is on your calendar. Um, some things that uh, have been um, involved with recently, the two air conditioning units that went out at the same time on the Sarah Yard Center have been replaced. The uh, splash pad is fully operational and uh, up and running at this time. Uh, we have the River Rat Regatta on August 13th at 5 o'clock. Um, that's a week from Saturday. We also have a rain date for that this year of August 27th, so also place that. Uh, we have summer camp. We have two weeks left of that, and I will tell you that my, my grandson was able to, actually both of them were able to attend several of those summer camps uh, this year, and they were really great uh, RAN events. Uh, we have baseball, soccer, football, and adult league softball coming up, and they'll all be beginning very soon, and that's as we transition into our fall sports. Um, we, do, we did get notice that uh, we're getting ourselves on the books for another ISO inspection for the fire department. That's done every five years. We're expecting that to be done around November-ish. Uh, we don't actually have a date yet. But the approval of the uh, fire code tonight will assist us in improving um, our ISO rating, if that's possible. So thank you for that. Um, also, I will just update you that we had uh, repairs that were approved last month at South 2nd, South 1st, and Stevens Street in the gutters. The gutter repairs, they are done. And our street resurfacing program is about 50% completed at this time. So all those things are moving forward. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mike. 
There's no um, further business. Uh, we do need to go into closed session, so I'll entertain a motion at this time to go into closed session. Pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11, um, Section A-5. So moved, Mayor. Second. Motion has second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, we'll go into closed session at this time. Thank you.